Hello and welcome back to Tainted Grail and our campaign mode. So, in the last episode, we spoke to a bunch of people, we killed a bunch of people, and we're now ready to do more of the same. So, let's actually go into the Mead Hall first off, and this video is kindly sponsored by the developers. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. And I would definitely say that I would like to go in here. There we go. The moods in the Mead Hall are sour, while relieved that the town bought some time. By now, even the simplest of Kuanak's folk realize this can only go on for so long. Curse this place. Curse the stinking breath of Tuathan. Yvain should be back with us by now. Mayhaps he got too comfortable in Camelot. Oh, I, I can speak in Yvain's defense. I think I will. You walk up to them and tell them the truth, that they have no idea how is beyond the men here's light. That Yvain and his group are fighting for you while you sit in the warm mead hall. That you should show them some respect. You almost believe this yourself. You take a place at the edge of the hall while people begin to talk about sending someone else to find help for Kuanakt. Many of them look toward you as they speak. You now feel stupid for drawing so much attention to yourself. Silence. Conversations cut off immediately. The crowd parts and a massive figure pushes towards you. The maimed knight is here. Was he sitting in some far corner of the hall the entire time? Or did he arrive just now? Leave us alone. Guards gently escort everyone but you outside, ignoring the pleas of people who just started their drinks. Guards take their posts on the other side of the door and make sure no one is eavesdropping by the outside wall. You're now alone with the knight, trying not to look at the bandages covering half of his face or to think about unsettling stories you've heard about him. You were able to talk at least some sense into these people. You tried to hold things together when tempers ran high. Good. You shrug your arms. You might just be the person I was hoping to find, someone who could handle an urgent task. I kept watching you today. I needed to see how well you deal with hardships and obstacles before I tell you the truth. The truth that our men here is failing. Is he attempting to smile with the unspo unspoiled half of his face, or is it an angry grin? It would seem this secret is even worse kept than I imagined. Yes, the men here won't last much longer. How did you know? It's not that hard to figure out, or I felt it when I made the offering. I felt it when I made the offering, why not? More proof I was right about you. He sighs. When Lord Yvain left me in charge of this farmhold, I thought the task was beneath me. Turned out, it was quite the opposite. He looks at his bandaged hands and then turns back towards you. I cannot travel outside anymore. Will you help me? Oh, well, what do you want me to do? We have to find a way to strengthen the men here and buy more time so that Yvain may finish his quest. Blood is not sufficient anymore. We need another source of power to lay at its feet. Well, where, where should I look? The clouds of weirdness, it's impossible to travel. No, I'm going to say, where should I look? Any ideas? In days of old, before the purges, it was druids who took care of men here. The one Yvain cast out from the city may still be alive. You may also ask someone who knows a thing or two about objects infused with magic. Your people speak about a witch in the woods to the west. Maybe she knows what could help our stone. All right. Uh, yeah, I... I, here we go, here we go. He's actually going to give us some weird candles. We know about weird candles from the conquest mode. And basically what they do is they will allow you to walk through the weirdness without any issues whatsoever, which is exactly what we want. All right, so I need to get his old home back. Where is the druid's old home? Is it over here? No, that's not it, obviously. That's the prison, or it seems like the prison, I think. So where is his old home because this is the inn this is the mead hall on the left here and what else do we have going on here uh, that's the red priest Nianti's home no I don't think that's ah this is his home up here very good okay <laughs> I can't believe I didn't see it before you enter the house that once belonged to the druid, and the first thing you notice is the unbelievable stench of rotting flesh. 
Then, a woman springs out of the dark and grabs you by the wrist, screaming, Please, don't kill us. Easy, I'm not, I'm not killing anyone. Wait, what's going on? I'm going to say, wait, what's going on? Because I might have to. <laughs> I'm not sure. You're... She falls silent, realizing she took you for someone you're not. She stands up, takes a deep breath, and utters just two words. Look around. There are people all over the cramped interior, lying on the floor, covered in blankets, moaning in pain, dying. They occupy every square inch of this place, save for some narrow paths left for their nurse, who this woman seems to be. But how does she nurse them? There's no medicine for the Red Death. Uh, well, what happens? what happened to these people? It's a safe haven for the diseased. Travelers, townsfolk, people who would have died on the streets, or were taken by the Red Priests. She explains, her voice cracking when she mentions the priesthood. You stand among the dying. The nurse looks at you with a quiet prayer on her lips. Well, unfortunately, I need you to leave this house. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to say this, but if we need to save the entire town or have to save the entire town, then we're going to need to make difficult decisions. The woman looks at you in shock. What? You explain that the only man who knows how to help with the men here demands this house be returned to him. What do you suggest we do then? You're considering your options. Is there a way we could ease their suffering permanently? I mean, if there's no cure, I'm not sure. What? Uh, maybe we could build a new shelter. I mean, they could... Oh, wait a minute. They could use Niante's house. If we could just rebuild it a little. You see the woman's eyes glimmer with hope. How would you even... The, the cost would be staggering. And the Red Priests won't take this affront lightly. The laws that let them take our sick are hundreds of years old. Breaking them would earn us a powerful enemy. Not to mention that an asylum next door would make people of Kuanakt nervous. Alright, so our new objective is to build a uh, an infirmary. I don't really feel like we should... Uh, <laughs> I don't really feel like we should kill them, to be honest. I mean... If it would help them, you know, to ease their suffering. Because obviously if there's no cure, then they're just suffering for no reason. But I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a look. You need to get his old home back. Okay, well, let's just have a look here. Ah, this ruin could be rebuilt in order to establish a shelter for the sick. It requires 300 wealth. Unfortunately, I don't have 300 wealth at the moment. Because uh, me being a somewhat dumb person decided to buy a wonderful weapon. And personally, I feel like buying the weapon was actually quite good i think buying the weapon was pretty fun because it's going to make battling just that much easier but obviously as as it is you know i'm uh, maybe a little bit hasty in these uh, in these things but anyway we're going to go over this way hopefully we'll be able to fight some people without uh, wait a minute what's this hmm, doesn't seem like anything over there so i should be able to get some wealth here and fight someone Oh, and that actually reminds me, I did not look at this guy's difficulty. So we are now running into a guy who is going to be dealing some pretty significant damage, times two actually. But we can't stun him. So I'm actually just going to use these, these cards right here, and then we're going to be doing massive damage. Not really massive. Well, I've got to say, that was actually pretty crazy damage that we were able to deal there. As soon as we gained that extra attack, really quite amazing. Ah, oh, we have a... Ah, yes, okay. So this is a Mindbender. Mindbenders basically summon illusions that have one HP. And if you don't kill them, they will hit you for a lot. Yes, they will hit you for a lot. So let's be a bit careful here. going to use my two block cards initially, and then we'll do the same thing where we're just trying to apply as many marks as possible. I have found that that is generally... The way to go with the brawler class being able to do that is super super important okay so let's have a look here okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use shield bash because she is not immune to stun so it's very easy for us to do this and we're going to do executor strike 
boom, 118 damage. How crazy, crazy amount of damage right there. And now I could stun. Yes, crippling attack, fantastic. And oh, I should have used all in first, shouldn't I? Ooh, mistake, mistake on my part. Okay, I guess I'll just use it now and then just do a little bit of damage. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the turn here, but I should have the ability to win. There we go, easy enough. Crippling Blow is so incredibly effective. It really is. Anytime an enemy is attacking, it does triple damage or something. It's, it's really quite crazy. Ah, Final Strike is actually really fun too, as you can see here. If the enemy was killed by this card, increase its damage by 10% permanently. Really, really good. So I think I'm going to take Final Strike. That sounds like a fun idea to me. And how much wealth do I have now? 148. Okay, that's not, so, eh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Let's have a look at the map here. Okay, so there's a Barrow. Uh, ornate chest. Ooh, hello there. I think I probably want to head over there as soon as possible, see what's actually going on. Oh, hello. Cyclops. It's challenging. Do you think I can win? Do you think I can win this? Probably not, right? Probably not. Can I steal this real quick? Oh, oh, hello there. Can I, can I take this? Oh, yes, I stole it. The tomb's entrance has collapsed, and there's no way inside. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate, but at least we were able to get the ornate chest, which contained a huge amount of stuff, and now I almost have 300 wealth, so I'll be able to, uh, you know, build the ruins, you know, build the infirmary. There is actually a uh, an inn. Oh, there's the maimed, maimed knight down there. We might actually want to go and see what he's doing, so let's go this way instead. And... We will find out what's going on. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's actually another enemy around here. Yes, there we go. Ah, it's just an infected human. It's That's fine. I don't really need to worry about that too much. I think I probably should also be able to go to the merchant and buy more weird candles. But obviously, I'm not entirely sure about that just yet. So, let's have a look here. I would love to be able to use Final Strike, but I am not going to be able to. It is going to do something very damaging. So, I'm hopeful... Oh, I'll just use Cleave, actually. Boom. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was easy enough. I actually wonder whether I am, well, shall we say, uh, being a bit uh, disadvantaged by um, killing the guy ahead of time. Because if I would wait until he summons his, uh, his little creatures, you know, then I might be able to get triple the experience. I'm not entirely sure if that's how it works or whether they still give you the same amount of experience no matter how many people you kill as long as you've dealt with that particular enemy anyway there's another infected human here and we also have the maimed knight let's speak to him a lone figure stands hunched by the path leading into kuanak cemetery you reach for your weapon expecting yet another obstacle but your grip relaxes as you recognize the tattered cloak and broad shoulders it's the maimed knight suspicions immediately flood your mind he told you he couldn't go out anymore but here he is no weird candle in hand he had to travel through pure weirdness to get here. The very thought of this chills you to the bone. Greet him. You make two louder steps and grunt to make your presence known. The maimed knight doesn't turn towards you, but he acknowledges you with a nod. I did not expect you here. Were you following me? Wasn't there something else you were to do? I also didn't expect you here. Weren't you supposed to stay in Kuanakt? I was, but I, I wanted to see this place one last time. Do not change the subject. Why are you here? Were you following me? This is where people of my farm hold honor their dead. You have no place here. Don't I? Was I so bad at running your little ungrateful farm hold? Anger, frustration, and disappointment mix in the maimed knight's voice. Then he takes a couple of deeper breaths. All right. I understand. You need to trust me if you're to follow me. Ask away. Tell me, who lays here? The knight places his hand on the unmarked stone. Nobody. Yet. Order is gone. So many knights missing. Geras tries his best in the borough. Bors has gone to the western farmholds to stop the war. Galahad is presumed dead since he abandoned the round table. But they don't have his insignia, so they can't name his descendant. And I... I'm stuck here, of all places. He sighs. 
Please promise that I should fall, and I will fall sooner than later. You will do everything in your power to save this damned island. The maimed knight turns around and walks away into the weirdness. I'll see you at the farmhold. Please, make haste with your search. Okay, well, I can offer him a weird candle for a safe journey back, but what is that going to give me? I mean, it's only one. Oh, yeah, we have five, I think. He stops for a moment. No, what you're doing for Kuanakt now is far more important than my fate. Thank you for offering this, though. This was a nightly thing. He sets off once more, and soon the tendrils of opalescent weird close in behind him. Right, well, I, I don't potentially... I don't actually feel like I'm in the weirdness right now. Um, I, I think maybe uh, maybe that's just for uh, RP law reasons, you know. But uh, anyway, we're going to go in against this guy, and... Her, oh, I, I, why do I always get this? I, I really... I, uh, never mind. Uh, this is this is not going to go too well for me. Maybe I can get some... Ooh, yeah, I could use this. I'm going to use this, actually. Can I... Ah, there we go. Use it. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to do much more damage. I might be able to kill him. Yes. Final strike. Boom. There you go. Now we have 10% extra damage on that ability, which is going to power itself up over the course of our playthrough here, which is super, super good in my opinion. Okay. So we have... Ooh, we have a necromance around there. And... Ooh, embellished chest. Hello there, embellished chest. Oh, dear. I seem to have run into something. I'm wondering what it is. Oh. Just a regular flesh-eating grub lava. Well, that's pleasant. Okay, well, I should be able to eliminate this very easily indeed. Uh, I was actually hoping that I might be able to stun it so that I might get um, the, the finishing move or something, but it seems like that is not, not the case. But I am getting some blood, uh, blood vials. Those blood vials actually sell for a pretty significant amount at the merchant, so if I needed more money, then I could get it from there. But anyway, there we go. This is the weirdness candle, by the way, if you haven't seen it before basically allows me to walk around and uh, not have too many difficulties it only lasts for five turns and uh, that basically means that if you're not moving uh, you're not going to have it be consumed so it's not duration based or anything like that which is actually pretty good okay so she's only going to hit for one attack so I'm just gonna go for a standard standard block here and then we'll just follow it up with an attack right there as well and we are fine. I do need to try and stun her, if at all possible. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so she's not actually intending to attack us. So it's not going to happen that we will be able to use this. Oh, she was actually going to attack? Oh, okay, so it was actually showing an attack, but I, I thought that she was going to do something else. That is perfectly fine with me. So I think what we're going to do now is we'll do, once again, small strikes. There we go. Pretty, pretty massive damage. And we'll do breathe just so that we can gain an additional a uh, little bit of energy. And I should probably be able to win this no problem at all just by doing a stun and then executive strike. Boom. 187 damage. That's crazy. Also, we just gained a throwing knife. Deals damage equal to your weapons damage and applies minor bleeding on the target. We also gained 500 experience. Very nice indeed. I'm actually wondering what, uh, what kind of difficulty these enemies are because I'm defeating them relatively easily and I'm not having to worry too much about them yes unfortunately because the weirdness is around here it is making it a bit difficult to see enemies on the map as well uh, okay so yes I know I know this uh, this particular enemy it does 25 damage and in the, the conquest mode it actually does 25 damage to all enemies surrounding it I'm not entirely sure if it does that here but obviously we only have one enemy with us here so it doesn't really make much uh, much difference Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so I can't stun anyone, so I guess I will just go for the standard attacks. And I guess I will just go for this, because why not? It does more damage anyway, and it's only if uh, an enemy is stunned that it does triple damage. So it still does a decent amount. Okay, so let's head down here. Embellish chest. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it, a, is it a mimic or something? Because I just ran into the chest, and now I'm getting attacked. No, no, it's just one of these guys. Okay, nothing to worry about then. Boom, stun, and I can literally just attack it with anything pretty much, and it dies. I mean, most of these enemies seem pretty easy for us at the moment. I think mostly because we have purchased the innkeeper's weapon. I think the innkeeper's weapon really makes a huge difference. Okay, who? what's that? That's a defiled corpse. 
Okay, I've only got three turns remaining. Bear that in mind that there is a uh, quite a bit of pressure to uh, think about when uh, going into the weirdness. We're just going to stun here. Oh, I should have used all in first again. Uh, okay, well, it's okay. I did it in the wrong order, but I think it's fine because now we can just... Ooh, no, we can't use that. We can... Uh... I guess what I can do... Oh, I can just use cle Cleave. Oh, no, but Cleave does 46 to 53 damage. It might kill it, but it's highly unlikely. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stun it and then just do small strike. I think that's decent enough. Because as long as we can prevent it from attacking us, that's really all that I care about, to be honest. So let's just do two executive strikes. Aha! As you can see, it has now raised some corpses here, which is not entirely good. Thank you very much. So this is going to be problematic. Thankfully, it does have scars, which basically means that you do more damage to it, but it then in turn does more damage to you. So you do have to be a bit careful. I do need to get some more armor, actually. Getting some more armor would be very, very useful right now. So we're just going to stun it and then use this. Boom. Oh, okay. Apparently, it's can't, it, it's just it's just reviving itself consistently. Okay, so I can now use Final Strike. Boom. And uh, I can get that powered up as well. I love the fact that there are cards that you can continually use and they gain in power over time. It's a very cool thing to me. Okay, so Chain. Chain is another thing that you've got to take into account with some cards. This basically multipl multiplies the card effect by the number of cards of the same type played in this round. So in other words, if you use stance cards a huge amount and then use this, it will multiply the card effect by the amount of stance cards that you've used. But I am probably going to use advanced attack here because this is a one cost and generally one cost cards are really, really good in my opinion, especially for the brawler. Oh, look at this. Weird man. On each turn start, gain three brawler charges. That's actually really, really good. However, haste is the the thing to go for in my opinion because look at this on enemy kill plus one energy draw one card this is just insanely good in my opinion basically you can't get better than this as far as i've found so far i feel like haste is probably the most powerful passive ability that you'll be able to acquire it just provides you with so much really is crazy good so we'll just use that there we go easy enough victory we're powering up our final strike card by a significant amount right now and I'm going to be very interested to see what happens. Ooh, Undead Spawn. And we have... Ooh, hello there. A Silent Weird Child. Okay, that's going to be kind of interesting. That's going to be a challenging fight. Okay, so we also have 80... Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we're going to stun it. And then we'll use Executor Strike. I mean, why wouldn't we, right? Yeah, easy. I mean, I should have used All In again. Ah, I always... I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I've, I've, I've always forget to use that. But, oh uh, well. Uh, there's actually someone in here that I need to speak to. But I actually want to fight this. Hello there. How can I... How can I get over here? Is it... Is it this way? Aha! Okay, so it seems like I need to walk past a certain area to be able to engage this. This might... Be, oh, no, no. Apparently not. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'm actually kind of surprised there. Oh, well. Easy. <laughs> Easy enough kill. And uh, as you can see, you don't actually get experience for killing those those uh, flesh-eating lava or anything like that. Okay, so no, it doesn't seem like I'm actually able to attack the silent weird child. I'm actually going to use my weird candle again because I don't want to walk around in the weirdness unprotected. That would not be too good. And we have another embellished chest here. But what else is going on here? Oh, hello, alchemist. You find a small camp in a clearing surrounded by chimes made of glass and clay bottles. A woman in a filthy robe makes notes on thin strips of birch bark and curses from time to time. She notices you when you make noise, nudging one of her improvised bells. What do you want? Camping alone in the woods isn't a common pastime. What is your purpose here? And what is your purpose here? I'm working. You're taking a stroll. Leave me alone and do your hero things. Go kill a giant rat or something. Tell me, what's going on in this forest? A strange substance in the ground is causing hypertrophy. When I've heard of this, I immediately thought of turning it to advantage. That's what's happening. Hypertrophy? 
The woman starts explaining like she was talking to a child. Can you imagine hens the size of horses? One egg could feed the entire village. She notices your gaze and sighs. Something in the ground makes animals much larger than they should be, and I think their blood might be the key to solving Avalon's hunger. I believe that with more experiments, I can extract the right substance to help our livestock reach humongous sizes. So what's your plan? I need the blood of overgrown animal specimens, and as you can see, I'm not a warrior. Lend me a hand and exsanguinate these beasts for me. This means they need to be killed. She hands you a couple of vials made out of rare transparent glass. All right, another quest. Okay, perfectly happy to do that. And I'm going to probably need to make my way out of here soon-ish. Although I'm kind of enjoying running around and picking up bits of loot. <laughs> uh, I am in very much enjoying that. Okay, there's another embellished chest. There's the inn. Another ornate chest is very close by to me, so I'm probably going to go off and get that. We do have some more enemies to fight, but we don't need to worry too much about them. I don't think. No, especially these ones. These ones are relatively simple. There we go. I actually would like to get into a tougher battle at this point because I feel like I'm quite powerful right now and I might be able to do something. Oh, you know what? Should we fight the Cyclops? It might be fun to fight that Cyclops. You know the one that we saw next to the Barrows that was, uh, that was empty? Yeah, I think that could be pretty fun. Let's do Final Strike there as well. But yeah. Uh, might be cool to fight the Cyclops. That is going to be a very, in my opinion, a very challenging fight. And we are getting a lot more flesh-eating grubs here. Hopefully we'll get Final Strike to be able to make the most of it. No, we're not. But, I, you know, I could just wait, you know. I could just go to the next turn and just wait and just power up uh, Finishing Strike a whole bunch. That might actually make a lot of sense. Okay, so we have infected humans here. There's an undead spawn, apparently. Ooh, there's a lot of wealth down here. Look at that. Wow. Okay, yeah. That's going to be pretty happy for me to take. Yes. And, okay, so this guy's immune to stun, as we know. So I'm basically just going to use small strikes to apply as many marks as I possibly can to the opponent. There we go. And advanced attack. Boom. <laughs> That's all we need to do. That's all we need to do. These guys are pretty easy now, because if you recall, we were unable to kill them in, pre in the previous episode before they summoned their uh, their friends, I suppose you could say. Aha! There seems to be another Cyclops here. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so it seems like I can actually walk around them. And look at how much wealth there is here. This is crazy. Ah, leave, Betrayer, the maiden said, as I will leave this world. She clad herself in a mottled seal skin. As you choose your king, I choose the depths, and woe unto those who will interrupt my solitude. The man looked as the fair maiden transformed into an ugly sea beast, but he didn't see her that way. For him, she was like a beautiful pearl, hiding in its dark shell. Ooh, we got some lore. We got some lore there. We have the observatory. The old wood cracks grimly under your feet as you climb up the old tower. From atop, a fresh breeze welcomes you, and you can get your bearings of the land around you. The castle of Camelot, far along the eastern shore, the reflective surface of the Mirror Lake directly to the north, the pale walls of four dweller ruins to the northwest, and just to the southeast, the island asylum looms, an ancient necropolis carved into solid rock and ruled by red priests. Aha. So it basically tells you exactly what is around, and then you can uh, go to where you want to go, basically. Okay, so let's actually just take a look at some of the items that I have acquired here. As you can see, my inventory is actually very large. Show this to a competent blacksmith, draw two cards, deal damage. So here's the thing. Items in Tainted Grail. You can use items in combat, and you can also use items out of combat. And it, it is up to you to decide what you want to go for. Generates magical barrier with 30 HP, which, which wow, which protects you from foes. That's actually pretty cool. Discard all cards and destroy uh, and, and draw five cards. That's pretty nice as well. I'm looking for maybe some weird candles. Oh, wow. Oversaturated runestone. That seems pretty fun. Fully charge your rune. That could be very, very exciting. Let's actually use that a little bit. Rusty hammer. Battle horn. Okay, yeah, that's actually pretty fine. We also have healing elixirs. Look at this. Strong healing elixirs and everything. We're going to use that instead of the other. And we're just going to... 
and equip this too because you never know when we might need it you know because we're going to need to go into a uh, very challenging battle in just a moment there we go all right let's do this okay hardest fight so far of the series i wouldn't be surprised if i absolutely get murdered okay so he's not immune to stuns but every turn it doubles its damage <laughs> okay that's gonna be interesting all right well i guess i can basically just use this unfortunately he's got so much armor this is going to be ah i can ah, i should i should have used this actually okay i'm gonna use that now and i think that doesn't have any turn duration so now I should be able to do some massive damage to him. Let's just uh, uh, do this. Uh, oh, I can actually use this as well. There we go. Okay, so 600% extra damage. He's going to do 25 damage to me right now. Let's use block. And then we'll just use all of these things. And then I'll use my rune at the end. Nice. We also duplicated right there as well. Very nice to see that. Let's do advanced attack again. And let's do our rune. Boom! Oh, look at that. I did over a thousand damage. Did you see that? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot easier than I anticipated, but it would have been maybe quite difficult if I hadn't used the special item to oversaturate my rune and uh, get it fully charged up. That probably would have been uh, pretty difficult for us. But anyway, let's continue moving onward. And oh, okay. We have another challenging fight. Okay. Let's do this fight. And then we'll see if we can... Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. This this might be pretty pretty difficult. If I hadn't had that uh, armor item, then I might have had issues with the previous one. Anyway, I'm going to use Shield Bash here. Executor Strike just does so much damage. And then we can continue onward. Okay, uh, we can do another stun. And then we can just basically do small strikes, small strikes. Apply as many marks as we possibly can. There we go. Because here's the thing, whenever you apply six marks, then they gain a, hundred, a debuff that increases our damage by 100%, which is crazy good. Oh, final strike. I can actually kill it with this, I think. There we go. Done. <laughs> that is very cool. The amount of synergy that you're actually able to get with all of your cards is really, really fun. I feel like the Brawler is very much a class based on stuns. I, I think you can obviously build your deck in whatever way you want, but I think that basing it around stuns is probably the best way to go what's this damage random enemies each hit reduces targets armor by three that actually sounds really good we're gonna do that all right so i'm gonna continue onward here oh oh we've got we've got more cyclops okay i only have one more weird candle let me actually just take a quick look here not in my quest log but let me take a look at this okay so we are we're kind of close back to the village, but it's going to take us a little bit longer and we're going to have to fight through some more enemies. But for now, that will be it for this episode. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.